All right, I think I am live. And da da da. Indeed. All right. So today, welcome to the Sunday art stream for the robot combining tactics game Agus. Um, today we have. Today I'm gonna do some with. There's uh. So things are steaming right along with development. Uh, I'm a little behind on posting the Kickstarter update. That's on the agenda. But generally speaking, there's plenty of art that still needs to be done. Uh, we finally got done with all of the human commander art. Um, or at least the concept art for them uh, last week. And those were passed off to Dan Olson. Who will be doing the final art illustrations for them? Uh, so the we'll sh we should be getting a first pass on those sketches around um, this coming Sunday. So about seven days, we'll have ten pieces, and then we'll be focused. Then the process for that will be I will be focusing on doing uh, five. Uh, I'll be working with him on finalizing the first five, and then finalizing the second five. So we're gonna get those. So we're gonna get that art all nice and ready to go. But there still has there's still a few pieces of robot art to do, and we're currently in. I forgot to mute my stream. We're currently in uh, the process of doing a lot of design work on some of the final robots, and things are changing around a lot. So what we need. So what I know I need to do is there are obviously five new commander robots. So, five new commanders, and we'll see how well my computer uh, how, how cooperative my computer is going to be today. It's running pretty hot, because the room I'm in is hot. And... Yeah, that's the beauty of summer. So, it's seeming like it's going to lag a little bit, but we'll see. So we have five new commanders. There are two new level fours. And... There's at least two new level twos that are also going in. And then, uh, that don't have art yet, or at least only have, like, marginally concepted art. And then, we have, whatchamacallit, that's mostly it. And then we have, potentially, we have, like, Schrodinger's level 3, because we have existing art for some level 3s, but we're in playtesting right now, and so those robots' name could change, and therefore if their names change, the robot art changes. But, so we're basically, yeah, so maybe level threes. Uh, but I believe that should be it. Um, I was looking at the art the other day. And then there were there are various adjustments. For other art, I have to refurb some more art, but I put that on the back burner because it's the least important. Um, and can ultimately be done way later when we're not crunching for other stuff. So we have a small handful of those. You refer bullet bots, and then for the commander variant robots that come in the 10 pack that uh, deluxe backers get, we am gonna do some adjustments on those arts too. Um, so that'll be a thing, but that's also uh, low priority since that's mostly just those are just aesthetic changes to existing robots where I will. Shoot, shoot. Where the oh, way? There we go. Let's see. This is an example of me adjusting uh, one of our existing robot arts to something new, which may or may not exist. And so we got what was I saying? Yeah, and commander variants. Commander V's, which there are uh, not counting the ones you already have, robot. I probably need to like do like six or so of those. Six-ish. 
Um. <clears throat> Other than that, let's see. So, uh, depending on how depending on how design goes, this will speed along fast or slow, uh, as we really look at in second. As long as as we really look at like and uh, what the set what needs gameplay wise, things will evolve. But we do know at least some of the the new commanders have uh. At least some of the new commanders are confirmed with particular art. So I can start on those today. And depending on... I'm thinking about having Mong do the art for some of these because Mong does really, really good art. Uh, he's done some of our other robot art before along with our box art. He has from certain pretty fast turnaround time on the robots too. But nevertheless, I always give him uh, some concept art to work off of. So let's see. So in terms of new commanders, we have an A1, an E1, a G1, an I1, and an S1. Um, so we know. Let's see. Luxiana is Schrodinger's A and E. I need to go over that with the backer. Um, so I don't want to start on her art yet. Uh, and then G guy is definitely staying in G guy. And I guy is definitely staying an I guy. So Vatis and the Tiger Brothers are have their robots confirmed. And S is also definitely staying her class in S, but we haven't even shown it off, her off yet. So I don't want to start on that. So maybe today I'm gonna see if I can do some uh, concept art for, or at least maybe some finishing art for. Uh, we're gonna start on the final asset for the Tiger Bros, because usually with the Ikas, which is the I type, they're like squids and they have like law tentacles. Uh, Mong has shown that he does a really, really good job with those, so I might want to hand that one off to him. Our last Tiger Bros robot. It's a Zoid, essentially. So we have. Where it's a, uh, it's like a manacore and a tiger and a sort of a guard dog robot, and it's interesting because it's a G type that has it's quadrupedal, but most of the other G types that are quadrupedal are uh, like guinea pig shaped. But this guy is actually more like shaped like a cat. So it's really just you have to make, I just want to make sure he still looks like a G-type. But still, I um, want to make him look like a G-type and not look like a combined robot that has more pieces on him than he should. So he should still look like he has about as much mass and uh, parts as, another G -type, as any other G-type would. So he'll probably have like flimsy looking back legs and like a lot of his bulk will be centered around like his head and his upper torso. And like in the original like concepty art I did for him. Yeah, it's like he had like these uh large shoulder things on all four legs, kinda like how gel does with his guinea pigs that when you when there's a gel robot you have like these uh shoulder things and you have like little tiny feet that stick out and he walks around on those. But instead, this guy will have these shoulder things, and then he'll have, uh, like, bird legs. Sort of like, uh, the Get robots do, and the Go robots. So, but they'll mostly just be, like, metal trusses and not have, like, armor on them. So this guy's, like, he's going to be a tiger with bird-like features. And, like, we'll do, like, some art to get, like, a proper pose for him. And I might be overestimating my abilities to know how to pose a lizard tiger. But we'll see. And so like, that's the top of him. And then, so that's his neck. And just like all G-types, he's going to have like a big head. 
It's gonna look like a lion or a hyena or something. And I want to make sure that, just like all other robots, he has a distinct facial, he has a distinct uh, facial shape. So or eyes, distinct eyes. So maybe he's gonna have like this three eye pattern. And depending on how the commander, the thing about doing commanders, the commander robots too, is that they're definitely subject to change depending on how the commander art itself comes out. This is also how it kind of worked with, uh, when we were designing Poppet and Rios, Poppet, they didn't have character art yet while we were designing them. Um, so I had Dan doing the art for the characters, and I had Mong doing the art for the robots, and it wasn't done synchronously. And ultimately, I had to go in and edit the robot art, so it had, like, a little bit more parity with the characters. I'll probably end up having to do that with these two, like, so if Dan does something really cool with the Tiger Brothers design, I'll incorporate it into their robot. Um, like, uh, when Poppet had her robot done, Um, it came out as like a standard blue bomber, and then I went back and I added like gold filigree and cracks on it and stuff to make sure it kind of looked like something that was more poppity. No, yeah, we're hitting that lag, boys. And then for Rios, I actually just uh, went in and I think I, I didn't do as much to his robot. I just like refined it a little bit and made it so his robot looked a little bit more like Rios's giant arm gauntlet things. And I had like green glows to the robot. Mm. And that, so it's just like a lot of design work happening over here on the Aegis front. And then once design slides in place, then art can slide in place, and everything will be bonza. So we're still pretty much on track for having a vast majority of the robots, at least, uh, playable in the June, or the July release of the tabletop simulator demo. So I just like doing some aggressive, just aggressively designing. Actually, do I have, I believe I have the Tiger Brothers' card open. Okay, yeah. Where are you? Take this, and... I actually like the initial sketch that I did of him, so instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, I'm gonna, drag, I'm gonna take you over here. Turn these layers off real quick. This won't be the final pose. This is just a standing pose, but let me see if I can. <sighs> Let's see if I can just sharpen this up so I can get a better idea of the design. Prototype cards. Let's see, and you'll be able, you guys will ideally be able to see the uh, other two commanders this Wednesday. And then we will be able to say we've at least got all five of them in a decently ship-shaped part. And then 
You just have to look at them and be like, what can we do to these to possibly make them better? Or, you know, just fill out the set, make the final adjustments, like deciding on Luxiana is an E-type or not. Which is mostly not that big a deal because her stat line and her attack and her passive ability all kind of line up with her being an E-type or an A-type. So it's pretty good. Like just generally saying to like do we and like do we need this robot to be its own specific make, which I'm pretty sure it has to be because of how weirdly distinct the art will be, or do we like need it for like a mechanical reason to be a like another gone or something? God forbid. Da -da -da. Gen Con is in six weeks. <laughs> it's not. That's not a good feeling. Never is. Always gotta just like get everything done and sweet and awesome and looking good right before that. Uh, we'll be getting a new. Like I said, like uh, that's pretty much our hard deadline for getting the new cards pressed and printed. Not only for the tabletop simulator demo, but we're also gonna get. A new round of cards printed for the uh, for uh, the sake of bringing the Gen Con and using in for some uh, live testing for the events that we have lined up for Aegis. That'll be fun. Uh, we'll see if I can have as much of the art done as possible too, because that would also be ideal. How does this guy's arm work? That's the problem with sketches. Who knows? This did what felt right at the time, man. Let's see here. Hmm. We're mostly worried about, uh, not worried, but we're gonna, it's really the, definitely want to get the new commanders right, gameplay-wise. We want them to feel good, we want them to be simple, we want them to kind of make it sense and context with one another. Or simple, as simple can be, really. We're still having them be cool. Um... And like at least the uh, the level twos, the new level, so the new the new like rando combined robots that we're doing, we're not as worried about because most of them are most most of them are designed in a really hard to like a weird specific level four or level three or whatever has much less of a chance to completely like break the game in half than a uh, strong or weirdly made commander. Level 4s and level 3s, 4s, and 5s are kind of balanced by the fact that they can usually just be ganged up on. And it has like more stringent team building associated with them. Whereas like if we make like a busted commander, then well guess what? That commander can be used with pretty much many, many teams. But so far the commanders are coming out good. 
mild concern with this guy, but I think he just needs like some nerfs in places and he'll be fine. Overall, his commander ability isn't exceptionally broken or anything, and it's not really very complicated either. I think it has the smallest text box of all the current commander abilities. It's like, redirect damage to allied guys. I guess I haven't talked about that on the stream yet, uh, on this stream. But yeah, this guy is the Gur. His ability is that he can redirect damage to your allies if you take him. And it's really more of a ability of the pilots, the Tiger Brothers, where one robot has like manages like the robots like deflection techniques and the other handles the robots offensive techniques. I wonder if this robot, this robot's obviously just the final form of Big Dog, the Boston Dynamics robot. I am the dog, the big bad dog. Not going to Gen Con, but no one could go. Oh yeah, I know. Gen Con is, Gen Con is like, tough <laughs> to get to. <laughs> Also, it's just like expensive and stuff. We're lucky that Greenbrier has been very nice about, uh, you know, housing us and submitting demos and stuff for us. <sighs> Otherwise, it'd be pretty rough for us to get there, too. It's like a commitment. So. Like hotel rooms and stuff, ugh. Like you're looking at like, just to go to Gen Con, it's like, pretty god, between like planes, between like the plane and the tickets, and like any potential booth cost that you would have, like if we were to go into like the Unpub, the Unpub booth or like the Gen Con showcase, that's still like a few hundred bucks. And like, you know, a few hundred bucks for plane tickets, a few hundred bucks for a hotel room, and you're looking at like sinking in a thousand dolans with uh no guarantee to get any of that money back unless you're selling something. We're only you're only really able to go to Pax East every year because we live next to it. I am the dog. So let's see, I saw Sindane is in the chat. Sindane! Shout out to you, sir. One of the other design tasks is figuring out the abilities for the commanderless commanders. And like, some of them are definitely figured out, but I believe Sindane's has not been completely figured out yet. I did some brainstorming on it. Um, and we were like still figuring out, not figuring out, but we're finding out the best, the most optimal way to do these like quote unquote machineless commanders. And it's, uh, what was we signed on? Like they'll be equipable, they'll be equipable to certain robots. Either like a certain subset of robots, or like one specific robot, or like just any robot in a certain class, or a certain make, or whatever. Um, so each one will be a little bit different in that respect, but... They're going to be mostly not super powerful abilities, because there's a lot of chance for abuse because they can be equipped even though we're going to like control the robots that they're going to be equipped on um there's still more there's no there, there in theory there's more potential abuse cases for robots that you can just equip on anything i mean abilities that you can equip on to any robot so we're looking for like very simple Yeah, it's very simple stuff. Sindane, Sindane's character is this badass lady pirate. 
and I can't wait to see what Dan Olsen does with her because I think she's gonna turn out really good. He you know, he has one of his like distinct specialties. He does some really good job with like uh action women with like muscles and giant weapons. So we'll see how she turns out and uh if Sindane has any particular input of stuff he wants to see on the character, like aesthetically. Be working back and forth with Dan to uh make sure everyone looks really good. Sindane said he wanted a he likes abilities that kind of win through almost attrition, I believe. Chip away, have the opponent have them hurt themselves. Which is perfect because Sindane, the commander, is a G-type. Sort of aligned commander. She's all dressed in green and stuff. So it definitely makes a lot of sense for the character to have an ability like that. I also want to see if I can make the ability tied in with a pirate flavor because she's a pirate um so you know something dirtily that has uh pirate flair to it so let's see so this uh this robot that i'm drawing right now has a tail spear and that's like its main attack is that one that you saw that has like six range and one damage with a potential to crit so it's that it's different from a lot of other uh, G types. It doesn't have a cannon. It fi like the stat line functions like a cannon. It's like a six range attack that just shoots you um, from pretty far away. But this time it is flavored like a giant spear, and it's gonna have like tassels and stuff because the backer said he wanted like cool tassels and I think that's cool so like that's one of the things that'll end up being tied in with the commander I'm sure is like depending on what the commanders the those guy the tiger brothers spear looks like I'll probably make the robots tail spear look similar to it um or vice versa just to give them that like visual parody I am the dog, the big bad dog. Hmm. Let's see. So yeah, if Sindane's going to Gen Con, please make sure to stop by and say hello. Pretty sure was it? Yeah, I think you said that we uh we met at Gen Con like two years ago, I wanna say. Maybe that was another back here. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, I think that's what it is. Gen Con twenty fifteen is where you saw the game originally, if I'm remembering correctly. The other challenge will be to make this robot seem less agile than it looks, because the thing only has like four movement. So I don't want it to seem like it can like pounce and run really fast, because it totally can't. So I'll probably so that'll like just involve like changing up the legs a little bit. Tiger robot having this cool head shape. Yeah, that's why I thought that's what I was trying to remember like how does this robot's head look and
Let's see here. Um, I am the dog, I am the big bad dog. Let me think, what else? Yeah, what is uh, the... Some of the other robots... Yeah, we got... Or not the robots, the machineless commanders. Um... So, in the, the red one is called Micah the Red. He's a mask duelist, and we have the ability for him. It came about pretty quickly, which was nice. And we haven't tested it yet, but it doesn't seem like it would cause any issues. Just kind of a cool thing you can throw onto miscellaneous A types. Um, and it'll make uh, certain melee attacks better. And then. The E1 is Bry Fox's Cal, and she is going to have some kind of evasive ability that deals with your proximity to terrain, which is something that we haven't tried yet. But it seems pretty cool. That's one that will need a little bit of testing, because who knows if that will actually be busted. But I don't think it will be. Or I just want to make sure that one actually plays nice. Because some, things, some, ideas, some ideas sound really great on paper, but end up actually not playing very fun. So you never really know until you actually try it, though. But I think it's a good idea, since terrain-based abilities are something I want to try in the future anyway. So using Cal to tease at that is going to be neat. And that's part of like what the some of these backer commanders are going to be definitely be used for. Aside from teasing future lore, I want them to tease a few like future mechanics too. But also make sure the mechanics that they're using still mesh well with the current set. I don't want to go like full future sight. And do some really, really weird janky stuff. So, gotta keep them simple. Uh, the G-type commander is Sindane, we were just talking about that. I want to have some sort of defensive or retaliatory ability or something that also has a pirate feel to it. And then the I-type commander this is going to be pretty cool. We have a pretty neat idea for that one. Um, which also shouldn't break the game, it actually just makes the game a little... It changes a little bit how you think about playing the game, which is interesting. And then... There's... The S-type commander, Nolan, which I'm actually very happy with how his character design turned out last weekend. That was that was good. He's finally getting his art done. And he has now he's like distinctly cool. He's very he's very cool and distinct from all the other characters. He has a pretty he has a neat aesthetic. I kinda definitely wanna canonically make him a rap god. And have him be Cal's mentor. That'd be neat. So that'd be cool. Um, the dough, the big This is roughly what I was thinking, but is he too much? Does he look a little too much like a level two robot? So let's try to maybe I actually just make his legs 
slightly more similar to uh, a big dog's legs. He is cool, and the claws are cool, but gotta make it match the aesthetic and give him like <laughs> gonna give him some of these like little. I'm gonna give these like these little birdie toes instead, but still kind of have them read his claws. Let's make the claws smaller. Um. Or if I just like take away the hinges from the back knees and he actually becomes big dog, where it's just like he walks on a bunch of bent sticks. Let's see, so... Yeah, it looks a little weird. We'll still have it be hingy. So that's like, so that's like a cool thing, so I'm got that tightened up a little bit. And put you up here, let me check my email real quick. Bunch of junk. Alright, so, that's the grr. And maybe it's like maybe it's like back legs or like pistons or something. It's kind of like how uh, what's its face works? Oh God! Oh, God actually doesn't have knees. He just jumps around like a cricket. Not really like a cricket. Like, uh, moon shoes. Because everything can ultimately be traced back to 90s TV commercials. Moon shoes. Yeah, I think overall this will end up looking fine as a normal G type. Compared with Gamoon's lizard with sunglasses, the cannon. <laughs> that was also the other challenge. We wanted to make sure that none of these commanders are super redundant to the existing commanders. So, like, how do you make a G type that is not just, you know, a tank? And so, luckily, we got like a cool G type that doesn't look like a tank. It looks like a lizard dog cat. Um, let's see. I also did some, I did a little bit of art for the Vadis 
commander robot the other day, the Ica 610. Because Sir Reginald really likes the number 610. I forget what the reasoning was. It was a very specific number to have a fan club of. I guess Mark Rosewater's favorite number is like 257 <laughs> or something. So having really specific... Having really specific numbers you like is nothing to be ashamed of. I think my favorite number is probably just like, maybe like seven. Seven has a good shape to it, you know? Oh, I have the time. Ugh. It's actually amazing how, when I hit the art zen, man, can I pump out some stuff? And today I don't know if I'm hitting the art zen. <laughs> A lot of stuff on my mind. Gotta get a lot of stuff done before Gen Con. I am the dog. So the thing about this Ica is that um what should I call it? Oh you know what'd be cool if he had like if it almost looked like one of those seventies cars with fins, except it instead of having like, you know, a bumper or whatever, it's just its back legs are raised up a little bit higher. He looks fabulous. And then the robotic mustache, which is super relevant. God, my computer is running very hot. <sighs> Being in here is not good for it. I'll add the mustache in a bit. I can feel the heat of the laptop through the keys on the keyboard. That's always good. So he also wants, so I think, now Reggie, you can have as much input on your robot's design as you want, because yeah, you're here. So I guess right now it kind of looks like a frog. But then, well, the initial idea that I had for it was that, so there are six tentacles that come out of each side, except they're all, they all get like bundled and braided together into like this scorpion tail of like of like doom that's like all of the tentacles and then it can have like a super awesome little floaty beam thing like the original Ica had and it can like that'll be like his the shifty ability <laughs> and just shoot Swifty! Tricky, tricky, tricky! Wrap around, wrap around, that's right, that's tricky! Tricky, tricky, tricky! I think it's very violent. Yeah, what if this thing looked like it had, like, some car sensibilities to it? Show them off your serves like a star looking groovy. And, like, instead of the normal Ica eyes, it'll have, still have a big one and a small one, but almost look like, it'll have, like, these little things sticking up and the lights will, and the eyes will be underneath. 
So kind of like, uh, you know, like some kind of weird headlight thing. It's tricky, tricky, tricky. Uh, let's see here. Flip, 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 Philadelphia. Yeah, you, yeah. You can have the you can have the cool electric ball. Yeah. The Sundane's cool. He has all of he has all the promos. And of course, this year we'll have another promo. Still to be decided. We'll probably we'll see if we can get another Steven Art. That's also something I have yet to commission. That's on the list. I guess that would be easy. Whoever does it first. I can pass off certain cards to Steven and certain cards to Long. And then, let me think. Of course, the, does, the production question is, do I want to have Mong do the art and then pass the Mong art off to Steven, like last time? So we can get Mong's cool perspective and then Steven's cool coloring. Or do I just hand Steven and or I would just hand Steven an existing piece of robot art, maybe like level 4 or level 5 or something, and have him just do it up, do up my art. But my art doesn't in like, full perspective or anything. Yeah, it's fine. We'll figure it out. Either way, we're going to have some sweet robot art for Gen Con promo this year. Two ten doji. All right. I think that's definitely fair. Yeah. Like I think Gazeka one hundred is losing the electrical ball, so we can take that cool concept and put it on your commander robot, and that'll make your commander robot much more interesting, because it'll have something very specific, least special. It does, and that it will have has a cool purple electro beam thing. Apparently, Batiste figured out the secret to Ica mastery is to just braid all the tentacles together for maximum movement. And he'll also look like a cool scorpion. And then it'll have like two it has six coming out over there. And then the other two tentacles will be in the front like this. And this will also be an example of me figuring out uh, depending on what the final card art looks like, I'll make the mustaches match. The mustache on the robot will look at, like, the mustache on the commander. Visual parody!
So yeah. And then let's try making a new layer. And this is actually an idea I've been bouncing around in my head for a bit too. Is that I already know what Lexiana's robot looks like if it's an A type. Because we kind of already have like concept art for it. Um, but what does it look like if it's an E type? And how can we get that cool chain scythe thing going on if it's an E type? So it's like, also we can like make it an Esper, but I don't want to make another Esper. It also doesn't really do anything that Espers do specifically other than being a non-flying E-type. So I want to make an E-type robot that doesn't look like an Esper, but also doesn't fly. And it has to look kind of skeleton-y. And it can't be human, but it can't be overtly humanoid because then it would look more like an A-type. These are the... these are the design restraints that make designing robots hard sometimes. <laughs> oh, let's see. It might end up looking... <sighs> something like an Esper. It's just like, do I want to make a flying cocoon? The cocoon! The cocoon. <sighs> like espers are made to kind of look like ghosts, and so what is it made to look like skeleton? Cast. Does anyone remember the Casper the Friendly Ghost cartoon? Back when they made cartoons from every movie property. Those were the days, right? The Men in Black cartoon still holds up. <laughs> uh. Oh man, I for you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put on music. Ah, that's so unlike me. I actually, I literally forgot, I just straight up forgot to turn on music for the stream. So now everyone is just, has nothing to listen to but my microphone picking up static in the background and my dumb voice. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is, this is my sin. <laughs> What if... If I made it look like a sarcophagus, then it would still look like an esper. <sighs> it's okay, kind of like how, uh... What should I call it? At Walls, uh, at Walls Excel is actually just an e jet with modify with like a mod with a body kit is what it is. So I think it's fair if this character's was like an Esper that she heavily modified. It's just like maybe if this is like the progenitor, the progenitor of all Espers passed down. Her family line for generations. <laughs> no, I'm strong line for generations. E types are some of the simultaneously easiest robots to draw, and sometimes the hardest robots to draw. They're all like shaped like diff just different shaped potatoes. Oh, you know what? That's kind of cool. What happens if... 
What if it has like a giant chain or series of chains hanging on from it? And it like drags them around the floor. And then we'll still make it look festive though. I was playing on trying to, I was seeing, I was gonna, I was experimenting with the idea of the robot having a sombrero. But how much cultural appropriation is too much cultural appropriation? I also have to make sure it looks good with the commander. Casper is the friendly ghost. What if it looks so happy? No one would no one would ever want to shoot it. <laughs> Should make it the Aegis equivalent of Mimic you, that Pokemon. That's creepy but adorable. <sighs> anyway, so let's see. Let me make it look like a basilisk. Not a basilisk, a gorgon. Um, yeah, I like I kinda like the idea of Like chains and stuff being the overall theme, because yeah, like we're gonna have it's still. I think it's still gonna do the thing where it whirls around and has like these chain sights. So, that's like, that's a major theme. Some days you tune in and you get some sweet concept art. Other days you tune in and you get whatever the hell it is I'm drawing now. But at least it's, it makes sense to me. And it'll be enough to polish later. Do you still have a turbine? Yeah, sure. Only just figuring out the proper face we'll think will be a relevant thing. And like and probably get like an interesting head shape too. That's not just the Esper kind of dopey head shape. Maybe a little bit more like a dust skull. Where's the sombrero?
Actually, what if I did just do kind of a sombrero shape? Well, watch this. We'll see if this works. So I'm going to make top of its head make something like this. And what if I had like a ring floating around it, like a halo or something? But it can also look like a... It can also look like a sombrero. <laughs> Get rid of this blob that I drew next to him. There we go. Much better. Uh, let's see. I don't know why my brain just naturally wanted to redraw the sombrero. Let's not do the sombrero. <laughs> Let's take a chat poll. Who wants this robot to have some sort of thinly veiled sombrero? And give it the Gurren Lagan. Doesn't really make sense though. I guess well if I made the uh if I made the chain scythes the same shape as this headpiece, it would maybe tie it all together. So if I gave it like a bladed headpiece or something. It would kinda have like this. Yeah, yeah, maybe she'll have like a lunar a lunar theme to her. Because ghosts and moons kind of go together. Do, 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 do. Tactics. I'm doing I'm doing this robot art for a video game coming out somehow. I want to try digital. This is killer. Tactics, welcome to the chat. Who might you be, sir? Or madam? I hope that you uh <laughs> enjoy sometimes uh, so I'm telling you sometimes uh the art streams way better than this I'm just potentially not feeling it today but we're else but we're at least we're getting good ideas on paper it's not a complete waste some days I can just design like 10 robots in a sitting and yeah we all know anyone anyone's ever done art knows how that goes So let's see. You... Let's. I said in the chat that I'd be doing some level 4s, but after recent meetings, it's like... Names of one of the level 4s might be up in the air. You know, we should just commit. And that would change the whole design of the robot, so I want to start on it. We do have some good concept art pre-made for the other level 4 though, which we're probably going with because I really like the design. And the uh, naming is flexible for it. 
so. And the level twos that the level twos are um also up in the air. Yes, tactics. I would love to see your art sometime. Robot banner. Robot art could always be shared. Also relevant for Reginald, I am finally back over on the East Coast, so maybe at some point, I'm all, but my, even though my schedule's pretty tight for the next few weeks, maybe at some point we'll be able to do an Aegis powwow. Because I'll be out here until around August 14th-ish. And then we head off to Gen Con. It's, it's hot over here. Somebody made a good, somebody over in Seattle made a good point where it's important for, I think it's very important for people to grow up in a place with really bad weather and that way you're pleasantly surprised when you figure out that a majority of the country has normal weather. Three rough ideas for a commander robot. I'll probably have Mong do this one because he did the original sort of inspiration for this robot and he did a really good job with the motion and scythes and stuff of the last version of this sort of idea. And then... What you call it? So let's see. This guy, this Esper guy, quote unquote Esper. Haven't really figured out a good name for him yet. I've, like been dabbling. Ooh, good names that start with E are very hard. I want to call it. I could just literally call him the Evil. But yeah, that's lame. Um, hot, hot, hot. So two new level twos. Which one of them is a thing? I think we have at least one of them concepted. So like, I have this, I have this big sheet that I did a bunch of concept art for uh, level twos a long time ago. We actually have a whole series of various level twos that are uh. At least visually east out. And then, and then, um, so two new level twos, refurbished old robots, commander variants. New commanders, so we have the S type that I don't want to start. The A type, 
that hasn't really even been talked about yet. So, don't want to do that one. Um, one level 4 is in limbo, the other level 4 has its artwork kind of already done, or at least the concept work. Two new level 4s. I mean, two new level 2s, like I said. One of them has work done, the other one's kind of in flux. And then... And just generally refurbishing old robots. So... What do you think? Other than refurbishing old robots, and I can spend my time more wisely today than doing that, um, I think that might be relevant-ish. I'll like slap some colors on these real quick, is what I'll do. Because the more complete they get, the faster and more cleanly I can hand them off. So we'll have this guy being like some kind of like dark greenish color, I guess. It's actually funny how clean some of this line art looks. Then when I like bust out and try to do actual line art, it takes me forever. But if I'm just like dupa duping around and they just like bust out the clean stuff. Like honestly if I did the layering properly this guy could with a little bit of touching up this guy could pass for a uh, final robot art. Buzz, buzz. Also, if I continue doing this, my computer is probably actually going to melt. I need to relocate somewhere with air conditioning. Super secret tech, create clipping mask. Now I can paint all over this without worrying about it going outside the lines, really. Because, yeah, this guy is going to have, like, kind of a green-black aesthetic, I think. 
uh, depending, like I said, it also just depends on how that uh, final color scheme turns out. So I usually end up editing the color schemes anyway. I am the dog. With that metal underbelly. And then... Yeah, there's three eyes. Honestly, I'll probably, like, depending on what the final spear looks like, I might, like, make his spear, like, tipped in gold, because that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, there we go. So, that's... A gur. And then... If I color pick this particular shade of purple... But the, the Ica purple is what that is. Also, it's been, I just realized it's been exactly one month since the Kickstarter has ended. Wooey. And, like I said, the Kickstarter update's a little behind, but it should be going up soon. Um, I already updated all the graphics for it and everything, just need to write some stuff out, talk about our progress. If you've been following the streams and the Discord chat, you pretty much know where we are. But we've done a lot of, uh... A lot of design work is laid, has been laid ground, a lot of the uh, spreadsheets and stuff have been worked on. A lot of the concept art is done, which is actually what I'm doing right now. It's like pretty much all the concept art that can be done at this point is done, and then it's like the last of it will get done over time. Like lots of non exciting back end work too. Like general oh, just general updates, none of which is exciting. Um a lot of playtesting. A lot of just uh sitting around and designing stuff. Coming up with like what you guys see on the stream is the uh result of many, many various iterations, and then staring at the ceiling and testing weird ideas. So you guys get the best of the best. Because I've definitely come up with like a lot of other interesting ideas for the commanders that we're trying out, but they don't like fit in the set, or they are just generally like unmanageable at this very moment. I wanted them to be simple. <sighs> so yeah, a lot of work with that. Turns out that designing a bunch of new robots takes up time. Everything else is kind of going forward. A lot of talk with the manufacturer and stuff. Yeah, just a lot of talk with the manufacturer. Still working on... I did a lot of work with the... a lot of work with the... The board are... The board and the terrain this week as I, like... Nail down the exact... Down to the millimeter size of... The dumb hexes on the board. Because if we make the hexes on the board a certain shape and then make the terrain... Punch boards slightly off, then all of a sudden everything's screwed. So it's just, like, lots of... 
very unexciting noodling with stuff like that. Um, profoundly <laughs> unexciting. I was like, I'm at the airport and I'm on the plane and I'm like, doing mental gymnastics to figure out like, well, if I move, if I shave off a row from the board and therefore make all the hexes 7% bigger, that means I have to look at the punch boards and make those 7% bigger and then rearrange them if they don't fit anymore. Um, so it's just been a lot of that, you know. Uh, I might just commit to the current sizes. It's like, it's my, it's my journey. It's my goal to make the board as small and manageable as possible so you can comprehend it better when you look at it. But at a point, it becomes too small for a four-player-ish, and then that's like a thing. Um, so, just working on that. Uh, da -da -da. Alright, let's see. So there's purple squid. I'll probably give him like some green highlights or something, depending on what the final commander art looks like, because I totally wanna push the purple and green aesthetic. Green and purple, green and purple. And then Control Shift. And, uh, get, this guy will be like definitely different, if he's in the, if this guy is similar looking to an Esper in terms of body, he's definitely going to be different looking from an Esper in terms of color, but I think this guy will be like the darkest bluey type that we have, I'm going to try to make him like midnight blue, because if Luxiana ends up being kind of blue colored, I also wanted her to be like a dark, like, black and midnight blue sort of uh, uh, color scheme. We're also still making sure she looks festive because like the red, the red and the gold and the white kind of make her look very festive. And I like that. Yeah, probably something looks a little bit like this. So, like her, if she were if she, if she were to go blue type, B, E type, oh, she would probably have like yeah, a blue, black, and gold sort of aesthetic. I'll still put like yellow flowers on her hat and stuff to make her not look like she walked out of a morgue. I still want her to be visually interesting, not just like really boring, looks like Raven from Teen Titans. The Raven has a nice idea. So like those three are done, and then the S type, which is a spoilers, it is a salve. So we have a salve commander, at the moment at least. Um, that won't be that hard to design. I already kind of designed it. Oh yeah. I just got a message from Reginald because it's hard for me to check the chat uh, while I'm doing this. I don't have two laptops set up today. I want him to have actual legs with joints. Let's see, I can see the six tentacle tips being a circle 
around the electrical ball at the end of the tail. Electrical ball, not sure how to feel about the legs. Have legs with joints. Okay, define legs with joints. Ugh. Like, uh... Right now he kind of has... Whoops. A similar kind of leg style to, uh... We know has a similar kind of leg style to the other uh, Ica. As catchy as he looks right now. <laughs> Tad annoyed to try try. The eat at a restaurant, literally the only person there, and <laughs> it was ignored for 10 minutes. Yeah, sometimes that happens, and I don't really know how. It's like they literally just don't want your business. Let's see. Actual legs with joints. Um, let's see. Eh. I'll just follow up with you later. Like I said, my computer is going to melt. This won't be the final pose anyway, it's kind of hard for me to edit him right now because of the weird pose that he's in. We can do some sketches of some joints, or some better sketches of the legs after some point. At angles and still low. I want it to be spider like at angles and low to the ground. Okay. It probably makes sense. Man, do you want a spider or a scorpion? They're two different things, and we also have to make it look like a squid. Jesus. Reggie. I'm making this very difficult. Oh, so you want like a, uh, kind of a body like this, and then. So that's kind of like, it's kind of like where he's going right now, but I can just push the legs a bit further, and then. I don't even know where I heard scorpion from. I think Kettle told me something about scorpion looking. Um. So yeah. It'll just be difficult to have, like, high-rise legs and then the scorpion tail and get it to look good from, like, a silhouette. Or maybe not. It might be fine. But, uh, regardless, irregardless. We'll figure it out. But yeah, um... Yeah, short stream today. Uh, like I said, most of the art's getting there. Uh... I have, like, a pile of stuff to do, like writing the Kickstarter update. And, um, we're getting the robot list done. We said it would be delivered in June, and I just noticed that. So the robot list is already drafted, and, like, now, oh, we're just getting graphics for it. Jesse's putting together some bar graphs because he really wanted to play with the my anime list API. Um, so yeah, it'll be pretty cool. Uh, 
I look forward to the Zephyr Workshop top 25 robot thing list. And that'll be all uh, great. Do, 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 do. But for now, um, I'm gonna go drape myself in ice or go to Panera Bread or something to work. All right, everybody, I want you to have a good day. Um, <laughs> my phone started to cut out of the stream now. Sorry, Reggie, just message me later. Uh, and we'll see if we can get a... We'll see if we can get a good shape for your robot going. Or a good leg shape, rather. But yeah, I look forward to seeing the update. Uh, have a good one, peeps. Peace out, robot family!